Hi, this is the last video of Chapter 3, The Monopoly. In this video, we are going to talk about price discrimination. So just to begin, we know there are several pricing strategies that are useful in a monopoly. All of them have something in common. What they have in common is that they can capture consumer surplus and transfer, transfer the surplus to the producer. So instead of selling all the products at the same price, sometimes the firms can decide to sell a good at different prices for different consumers, even when the cost of producing each unit is exactly the same. And this is called price discrimination. So price discrimination is a practice that, that is going to consist in selling a good at different prices for different consumers, even when the cost of producing each unit is the same, as I have said. There are two important effects of price discrimination, and these are the following. The first it that is that it can increase the monopolist profit, as the monopolist is getting part of the consumer surplus for himself or herself, and second is that it can reduce the social cost of monopoly power that we have calculated in the last video it was minus b minus c if you remember if you don't remember just check again the the last video video number four so let's think about some examples of price discrimination in real life one of them is cinema tickets. You can pay different price to see the same movie depending on the day of the week. If you go on Wednesdays, for example, it can be cheaper for you to see the movie, but the movie is going to be exactly the same. So this is the same product. Or maybe depending on the time that you decide to go to the cinema and watch the movie, if you go to the last session, you will probably pay less, or if you go maybe in the morning, something like that. Another example is, well, if you are a student, you may pay less. Or if you are a senior, you may also pay less compared to regular people. Then we have plane or train tickets. I am sure that you have travel by train or by plane, many of you. So if you want to, for example, you want to travel from Madrid to London, you can pay different prices for the airplane depending on where you sit, which seat you want to choose, or if you don't want to choose any seats, you may want to pay less. Or, or just uh, the, um, the airline will decide which will be your seat. Then, if you want to do the speedy boarding, which means that you will go to the plane in the first, um, you don't, well, you you will skip the queue. You will go to the plane in the first um, place. It will be more expensive to do that. And at the end, the product will be the same. It will be a trip from Madrid to London. It also happens in the train, if you want to choose business class or tourist, you will pay different prices. And then we also have another example, which is discount coupons. If you go to a burger, for example, you can pay the usual price or you can just tell them a number of a coupon and have a discount. It is the same product, but at a different price. So in this slide we have uh, the initial situation, a monopoly is charging the same price to all the consumers, and if we have a marginal cost which is horizontal, we will find that the quantity is change in the market will be unique, will be this one, and there will be only one price, so the price will be unique as well.
then the profits will be here. It is the difference between the average revenue and the cost. These are the revenues, the cost. And we have in this triangle the consumer surplus because this is the price, it's above the price below the demand. And here we have the dead weight loss, which is only this area because now the marginal cost is horizontal compared to what we explained in the last video. If it was an increasing line, we will have even more, a greater that we lost. So what happens if the monopolist decides to discriminate prices? Well, the first situation is called first degree price discrimination or perfect price discrimination. In this case, a firm will know exactly the reservation price of each consumer. So it will be possible that the monopolist decides to provide, to set different prices to different consumers and the prices will equal exactly to my reservation price. For example, if I have a reservation price of 10 euros to go to the cinema and you have a reservation price of 4, the monopolist will set us different prices. For me it will be 10, for you it will be 4. Okay, so this is, here is the importance of knowing the reservation price or just hiding it to be able to negotiate and to have some surplus for you as a consumer. So in this case, if the monopolist makes exactly a perfect price discrimination and it knows exactly which price he can set to each of the consumers, because he knows the reservation price, he will set all the prices, all these prices, to each of the consumers depending on the reservation price, which will be given by the demand curve. Then the quantity that the monopolist in this situation will exchange or will offer to the market will be exactly the same quantity that we have in perfect competition. And all the, all the consumer surplus that we have in perfect competition with perfect price discrimination will be profits for the producer, for the monopolist. It means that with perfect price competition, with, sorry, with perfect price discrimination, the producer is able to get the whole surplus from the consumer and makes it profits for himself. Okay, because what he's doing is to set all the different prices, each for each consumer, depending on the price reservation. Well, in this case, we have a marginal cost which is positive, but we are going to see again what will happen if we will have a first degree perfect price discrimination. But now, instead of an horizontal marginal cost, we have a positive marginal cost, an increasing marginal cost. Then uh, we can see that at the beginning, if the monopolist doesn't have any information about the reservation price of the consumers, he will decide to set this quantity, to offer this quantity QM, because this is where the marginal cost equals to the marginal revenue at this point. Okay, so he will be offering QM at a price of, I draw this vertical line up to the average revenue, and the price of the monopoly when it's only one price will be PM. But if suddenly the monopolist has all the information about the reservation price, the firm decides to charge each consumer his or her reservation price. So here it will be profitable to expand from QM to Q here, to this Q, this criminal Q of first degree, which will equal to the Q if there were perfect competition. So the, the, this is the point where the marginal cost equal to the average revenue and the price of the last 
unit will be given here. This is the price of perfect competition, and it will be the price of the last unit for a discriminant, a perfect discriminant monopolist. But this is not the only price, because as, as I have said, he will set all the different prices depending on consumer's price reservation or reservation price. So when only a single price is charged as PM, the firm's variable profit is the area between the marginal revenue here and the marginal cost curve. Okay, so it will be around here. But at the end, if the consumer is able to to, sorry, if the monopolist is able to know all the reservation prices, he will be able to do this first degree price discrimination and all this will be profits for him or for her. Okay, so the, the profit expands to the area between the demand curve and the marginal cost. All this triangle will be profits because it was before and all this is also now. Even this triangle who, that will be added with loss in a normal monopoly now is um, part of the profits for the producer. So at the end, it has no social cost because the monopolist is able to get the whole surplus from the consumer. Nothing is lost. Okay, so now let's have a look at the second degree price discrimination, which is something like this. In this case, what we see is that uh, in some markets, it consumes, each consumer purchases many units of the good over any given period, and the consumer demand declines with the number of units purchased. For example, when we talk about water, heating fuel, gas, and electricity, consumers may purchase several units of this good, for example, several liters of water, but their willingness to pay will decrease with increasing consumption. So at the end, we talk about blocks of consumption because in this situation, the firm can discriminate according to the quantity consumed. It works by charging different prices for different quantities or blocks of the same good or service. For example, from zero to Q1, you will pay P1 from Q1 to Q2, you will pay Q P2. From Q2 to Q3, you will pay P3. And at this point, we see that there is, is a still part of the consumer surplus that is saved here because there will be people willing to pay more than P1, for example. We will see more about it in the exercises. But at the end, the idea is that the more you consume, the cheapest. Well, and at the end, we have the third degree price discrimination. And this form of price discrimination divides the consumer into two or more groups with separate demand curves for each group. For example, we have what we have commented before, the regular versus the special airline tickets, plane tickets, airplane tickets, or discounts to a student, students or seniors in the cinema, for example. And it, in each case, what the, cons, uh, what the firm is doing is to separate between two markets. Some characteristic is going to be used to divide consumers into several groups. Here we will have one market, for, for example, for seniors, and here for students. Okay, so depending on the elasticity of the demand, when the demand is more inelastic, as it happens here in this first market, the price is going to be greater. Okay, if the, the demand is more elastic, the price will be lower. Okay, this is the marginal cost here, and this is where we find the point where the marginal cost equals to the marginal revenue. Here again, so the price come here and the price come here. And that's all for the moment. See you in the next video.